Okay, this is tutorial on how to make line shift patterns uh, using GIMP. Uh, that's the new image manipulation program. It's free on Linux and is accessible through a bunch of things. So the first thing we want to do is a little bit of setup. Um, the thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open these patterns that I have already made, and you will have to do something similar. So you go, I made a um, patterns folder under my pictures folder, and the .pat is the extension for GIMP to remember that they're .patterns. And all these are are 20 by 20 uh, pixels, or 20 by 20 images that have some sort of symbol on them. I went with letters, something that was easy to distinguish. And I'm going to use those patterns later to distinguish between my colors. Uh, then you can have to make sure those patterns are accessible. So you create your folder, you put them in, go to preferences, uh, folders, patterns, and you're going to add that folder. And you're going to hit the add button, you're going to point to the folder, you're going to click OK. And then it's going to ask you to uh, restart GIMP to make sure they're accessible. Next, uh, you need to open the image that you want to go ahead and convert things with. So, um, I just trolled the web for one um, and found this one here. So I'm going to take this image and convert it into a latch pattern. So the first thing I want to do is scale the image so that way each pixel represents an actual color on the uh, latch pattern. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it 120 by 93. 120 is because that's about the size of the, the width of the um, uh, latch pattern that I have. Now, uh, you'll only see it's pixelated, but each one of these pixels now represents a single strand in the final artwork. Uh, this has a whole lot of colors though, so I want to reduce the number of colors. And so I'm going to go to image, mode, and change it to index. And instead of, I'm going to have the, have it construct its optimum palette, but instead of using 256, I'm going to use something like 8 colors and look at the result. And that doesn't look so great. So I hit Control Z to undo, and then index, and I'm going to go up to like 12 colors. And that looks pretty good, but let's go ahead and see if we're willing to go up to 16. As you get more colors, obviously you have to find those colors, they get closer together. But 16 colors looks pretty darn good, so I'm going to go ahead and take that. Now the next step, um, you're going to see some additional dialogues here that are quite helpful. So these are the colors used in that image. This is my color map. This is not normally visible. You have to go to Tools, uh, oh, sorry, Window, Dockable Dialogues, and then Color Map. And that is that one. Another one that's going to be quite handy is the Histogram, and that is Window, Dockable Dialogues, uh, Histogram. And right now we're going to use that information. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to change the size of the image. And I'm adding the length to the image, so that way I can have a, uh, a key. Eh, what was it? I don't know what it was. Uh, down here at the bottom. And I'm also going to take the layer and make the layer to image size. And uh, I'm going to change the colors, or change the image, back to RGB. And the reason I do this is because I'm doing black and white, and when I pick my custom color palette, uh, it might not have had black and white anymore. Um, but what I'm going to do is go to my histogram, hit uh, Shift-O, which is select by color, pick a color, and it'll tell me how many pixels of that color there are. All right. And for each color, each, the number of pixels is the number of strands. So for this one, there's 354. For this one, there's 1,204. Um, for this one, there's 1,282. For the white, there's 1,790-something. Uh, anyway, oh, I guess the white picked all the large ones because it also took this region. Um, so there aren't that much white. Um, but you can get all the other colors except for that last one, and or let's go ahead and change the, uh, so let's select this one down here, go to the bucket fill, pick some entirely ob obscure color that's not at all related to our image, and dump, uh, dump it down here. Hmm. Ah, uh, image mode RGB, yeah, no, we should be able to do that right now. Okay, there we are. So now if we hit Shift-O and select our whitish color before, go back to our histogram, we see that there's 123 of those. Cool. Now what we want to do is we want to take this image and we want to turn it into an actual pattern. Um, if I were... yeah. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so I'm going to pick my pencil, go to my pencil information, I'm going to pick a different brush, the one that's sort of more convenient. Uh, do something like uh, 80, not 880, aspect ratio is 0 0.2. Um, Oh, that's way too thick. Wow. So, image, uh, scale image. Now we're going to multiply everything by 20, because what we want to do is replace each one of these pixels with a symbol. But the pixel is the smallest thing that we have, so we need each one of these pixels to be much larger. Now, it's important that we change the interpolation to none, otherwise it sort of blurs things and, and blends them out as it blows things up. If we hit none, it won't do that at all. So, 1860. Scale. Zoom out, and let's go to work. So, uh, control A is select all, um, and maybe I'll zoom in a little bit more, so I'm going to start, and then control left click, 
uh, copies of color. And I'm going to make two copies of that color down here. One is going to be the actual color and one is going to be the pattern that I replace it with. Now we need to add a couple layers. One is going to be our pattern layer. And we're going to need one more layer that um, I'm going to call it my fills layer, which where I'm going to fill this layer with all the different patterns that I need. So I'm going to go to that fills layer, hit control A to make sure I select it all, go to bucket fill. And here's where we're going to use those patterns. So pattern fill. And I'm going to pick one of the patterns that I already used. And I hit this and it's going to cover the whole image with that particular pattern. I'm going to hide that and go back to my uh, image and I'm going to pick the color that I want to do first and I'm going to hit oh, go back to my pencil hit control uh, left click and draw it and then I'm going to hit uh, shift O and that means select by color and that selects everywhere that has a color I'm going to go to my fill level hit control C so now I've copied that pattern in the background go to my pattern level and hit control V and now it's replaced everywhere where that is with that now I'm going to it says floating selection here I just have to click somewhere over here so it actually takes down I go to my fills delete it Go to Bucket Fill, pick a new pattern, um, dump it on everything, and because it's hidden, you won't see the pattern show up, but it's there. Uh, and now I'm going to go to my next one, I'm going to pick my next color, um, and, oh, go to Pencil, uh, Control, click, uh, left click, uh, grab the color, and then I can paint it down here, then Shift O, grab that color, uh, go to my Fill level, hit Control C, go to my Pattern level, hit Control V. All right, now we're going to just keep doing that again and again until we've used up all 12 or 16 colors that we have. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and pause here, do that on my own, and you'll see the result. It'll be worthwhile to make sure you've seen the whole process again. So you select the color, you make a copy of it down on your key, hit shift O to select by color, you select everything that's that color, go to your fill pattern, hit control C, go to your pattern level, hit control V, it covers it all up. And you can keep track of each one of these is, uh, so far, different. And then we're, uh, you left click over here so it pays down. And we've got, looks like, three colors left. And if you hide the image of the horse, you can see the, the, the gray and black, or the d different gray checkered, that's the alpha level. That's the clear channel. So you'll know that you're complete when everything is, or when, you, when it's not gray like that anymore. Uh, just to double check in case you have shades that look very similar. So now we're going to go to our fill level, delete it, replace it with a new type of pattern. Um, dump that everywhere pick a color so go to the pencil control click click down here hit shift O you'll note that I'm only doing one copy of the box um, what I'm going to do is just erase half of it so we can see the pattern because I realized I had more colors than I had accounted for or than I had left space for um, I'm going to go to my fill pattern hit control C go to my pattern level hit control V um, click over here delete my fill uh, bucket fill pattern uh, blank would be good. <laughs> it's filled in. Go to uh, my level, hit my uh, pencil, control click to select the color. Put a sample down here, shift O, make sure to grab that same color. Uh, go to my fill, hit control C, go to my pattern level, hit control V. Uh, and then click over here to paste down, fill, delete, bucket fill, fill with a pattern, go with X's fill everything up, and it looks like this might be our last color, which is nice. Uh, it's filled up, you can see. Uh, go to our one, uh, go to our pencil, control, click to grab the color, hit, shift O to select all of that color, uh, go to our fill, control C, pattern, control V, and just to double check, I'm going to um, hit control A to select all. Um, hide the level of the horse, and I don't see any of the gray. <laughs> So that means we filled in everything. Cool. I'm going to cover up. I'm going to make our horse visible again. And I'm going to zoom in. And so now, you see this is our pattern. And let's go ahead and what we're going to do is I'm going to grab the eraser, go to my pattern level, and erase. In this case, where I have two copies of the box, I can just erase one of them. So here's the pattern, here's the color, here's the pattern, here's the color. Um, but when I switched over here to do... Um, uh, because I was running out of space, I only did one, so I'm going to just do half the box and half pattern. So we see that, oh, that pattern corresponds to that color. And there we are. Let's zoom out a little bit. Now, uh, so we've got our latch of pattern. If we hide the pattern level, we'll see again what we think the final product should look like. Um, and um, using the um, pattern, uh, using the uh, histogram information, if we go to the pattern, or go to the image level, and Shift O, select a color, 
Well, this tells us how many pixels of that color have been selected. Now, since ours are in 20 by 20 boxes, we divide this number by 400, we should get the number of strands. Do a little bit more math, i.e. multiply by 2.5 inches, divide by 36, you would get the number of yards of that color that you need. And that would be the last step that I would do, was to do that computation um, and write those numbers down here using the text tool to tell me the yards of each color that I need. You still then need to go to the store and find those yards and get them in the appropriate lengths. Um, but hey, that's then you're done. Okay, so I thought of two other steps that you would want to do, um, and that I normally do, but I just didn't do this time. Uh, so you're going to go back to your pattern level and do the rectangular select. And um, I'm going to zoom out so I can grab everything real quickly. And I'm going to grab around so everywhere that has the actual image that I'm interested in. And on electrical weave, every sort of tenth strand is colored a different color, so that way you can count up easily. And we can render that pattern pretty easily. So we go to um, uh, the filters, render, pattern, grid. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick a new pattern, and we're going to have it say 3 by 3, but the spacing be 20, and then the offset be 0, and, or actually not 20, 200 say, um, because 20 was the size of our um, little box, so 200 would be every tenth box. And then we pick a, a color, and for mine they're blue, so I just make them look exactly the same. And I do that, and I hit OK. And hey, now on top of mine, uh, existing pattern, I have these where I can count by boxes of tens, so I know that, oh, well, to start the diamonds, Whatever color that is, I need to go um, 30, so that's box 30, 31, 32, so I start at box 32 and move over. And then over here I can say, oh, well, I need to go down here and over. So it just makes it a little easier to read. Um, and again, uh, the other detail that's actually worthwhile to do is hit scale image, and you pick a resolution uh, so that this thing fits nicely on a sheet of paper. So, for example, this is the long side, so I'm going to make this uh, 10 inches. Um, so what I'm going to do is say that there's 276 pixels per inch. And that suddenly makes, oh, this side 10 inches and this side something less than 10 inches. So suddenly this will print on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper relatively easily. Granted, the boxes may be small, and that might be too small for your resolution. You might have to print it on a larger um, sheet of paper. But now it could go directly. If I had a printer selected up, I could just print it. Uh, there would be very little color used, um, and I would have a copy of all the colors that I need. Anyway, that's it. So now I'm going to stop. Thanks for watching.